Macky Sall, the former head of state of Senegal, has left the country hours after the inauguration of his successor, Diomaye Faye. Although the destination of Sall's flight has not been officially mentioned, reports suggest that he is most likely to land in Paris, France. This is not surprising, as just a few days before his departure, the press reported that Saul intends to spend his retirement outside of Senegal. But what or who is Macky Saul afraid of? I'll tell you. It's Usman Sonko and whoever else is close to him. And there's a reason for this. In order to facilitate a better comprehension of the subject matter at hand, may I kindly request to initiate this discussion from the onset. Senegal a country located in West Africa has been regarded as one of the most stable democracies in the region since gaining independence from France in 1960. Unlike many of its West African neighbors, Senegal has not experienced a coup d'etat in over six decades. However, recent events have challenged this reputation. President Macky Sall's sudden decision to imprison opposition politicians and delay the general elections which had been scheduled for February 2024 shocked many people. The people of Senegal felt that their collective destinies were being manipulated by the president's actions, and that's why they took to the streets to demand their justice a few weeks ago. Let me take you back. In 2019, during the presidential campaign in Senegal, serious allegations were made by the entourage of Macky Sall, the incumbent president, against Moscow. They accused Moscow of planning to provide funds to Usman Sonko, a strong challenger to Saul's presidency. Sori Kaba, the head of Senegalese expatriates, went on record stating that Moscow was planning to send two suitcases of money to support Sonko's candidacy. However, the Russian mission denied these allegations, calling them baseless and without merit. They further called on Kaba to refrain from making any further such statements. Macky Sall's ally claimed that he had reliable information that Sonko would receive two suitcases filled with money within 48 hours, via Guinea-Bissau and the rebel region of Casamance. Sonko, who had been running on an anti-French influence platform, was reportedly under attack from the ruling regime on all sides. Okay, that was 2019. Elections came and Sall remained in office. In the year 2024, the charismatic politician Sonko re-emerged with increased popularity and power. The establishment, led by Sal, was well aware that their French paymaster's influence was dwindling and that their days were numbered. Consequently, they conspired against Sonko and had him arrested in July 2023 on charges of corrupting the youth. Sonko's cult following of disenchanted Senegalese youths who shared his frustration with France's exploitative neo-colonialism was the basis of the charges. He was subsequently imprisoned and disqualified from running for the presidency due to a separate defamation case. This move was likely motivated by France's fear of Sonko and those who shared his views. Following Sonko's arrest, the authorities quickly dissolved his PASTEF party to ensure that there was no political platform for him to use to ascend to power. In addition to this, they also incarcerated his running mate, Faye, However, Faye was not disqualified from running for the presidency. Despite his incarceration, Sonko urged his supporters to back Faye's candidacy, given that he could not contest himself. For Sonko, the slogan was, freedom or nothing, and his supporters were quick to offer their support to Faye. Faye, a lesser known political figure in comparison to Sonko, shares similar ideological views with the latter. Faye's political agenda focuses on the establishment of a new national currency and the renegotiation of the government's existing mining and energy contracts with private conglomerates. He believes that a review of the country's relationship with France, its former colonial power, is essential as some opposition members perceive their economic interests in the country as a form of neocolonialism. This review is of central importance to Faye's campaign which has gained momentum among certain sections of the population. However, France has much to lose since Faye is now the president of Senegal. And this may be one of the reasons why the incumbent Macky Sall wanted to delay the elections. Well, just a few weeks ago, there was a ray of hope when the Constitutional Court rejected the idea of postponing the elections. Without wasting any time, elections were held on March 24th, 
just one month after the original date of February 24th. As a result, Mackie Saul, feeling the pressure, immediately ordered the release of the revolutionary duo, Usman Sonko and Faye, from prison. This historic victory over the forces of colonialism and a significant win for the masses, who always yearned for genuine independence from France and the West, caused the entire nation to go into a frenzy of jubilation. And now a day ago, Senegal's once jailed opposition candidate Bassirou Diomaye Fay was sworn in on Tuesday as the nation's fifth and youngest president ever, promising to restore stability and bring economic progress. Diomaye Fay, a 44-year-old former tax inspector, won the presidential election in Senegal by a large margin in the first round of voting, defeating Amadou Ba, the candidate of outgoing President Macky Sall's ruling coalition. This victory reflected the country's high hopes for change. During his inauguration ceremony, which was attended by over a dozen heads of state and regional representatives, including Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu, Ghana's President Nana Akufo-Addo, and African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Muhammad, Fay promised to manage affairs ethically and build the economy. This smooth transition of power was a welcome boost for Senegal, which had experienced three years of unprecedented political turmoil that had raised concerns about democratic backsliding in the coup-prone region of West Africa, where juntas have seized power and cut ties with traditional Western allies in favor of Russia. Faye's inauguration speech emphasized his commitment to creating a country of hope at peace with an independent justice system and a stronger democracy. Hours after being sworn in, Faye showed no hesitation in his support for Sanko as the Prime Minister of Senegal. This move indicates Faye's eagerness to get to work and to implement his vision for the country. With his determination and the support of the people, many are hopeful that Senegal will see a brighter future under Faye's leadership. Kindly provide your insights on the video by subscribing, liking, and sharing it. Also, we kindly request you to share your valuable opinions in the comment section below. Your feedback will aid us in improving and delivering better content in the future.